Hello, uh, I'm Rika Ekhoff, the Nordic editor of Unquote, the private equity and venture capital news provider. And one of the most discussed topics in private equity today is regulation, and especially the EU draft for the Director for Alternative Investment Fund Managers. And to guide us through this increasingly complicated landscape, I have with me today partner at global law firm Eversheds, Ronald Patterson. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, it's nice to be here. And first of all, this is a very ambitious and very complex project aiming to cover all fund managers. What are the main problems and challenges with this? Well, as you say, it is a huge regulatory project. Uh, it covers not only private equity funds and hedge funds, which are the ones most often mentioned, but also real estate funds, infrastructure funds, commodity funds, and other institutional funds. In fact, it covers every type of fund that is sold in the EU other than retail funds which are regulated under the USITS directive. Um, and essentially the, the key issues that need to be tackled are first of all ensuring that investors in the EU, particularly institutional investors, are not deprived of access to the best performing funds. Secondly, uh, ensuring that the costs to investors in funds are not disproportionately increased and thirdly, ensuring that each of those different types of funds, all of whom have different structures and different issues, are appropriately regulated, again, without massively increasing the cost to investors. Because it seems that one of the main burdens private equity has talked about is the increased cost burden, particularly with respect to, to the reporting requirements and disclosure. I mean, it seems that this might actually skew competition to the disadvantage of private equity. I certainly think that's right. One of the, the ways in which um, private equity funds will be subject to burdens which are irrelevant uh, relate to the requirement, first of all, that the assets have to be held by an EU credit institution acting as a depository, um, when in fact the, the assets of, of private equity funds are, are, are very straightforward and there just isn't a massive okay. custody issue there. Secondly, there is the requirement to have an independent valuator who is responsible for ascertaining both the value of the assets of the fund and also the value of participations in it. Um, that is, uh, again, completely irrelevant in the private equity industry. And then thirdly, as you've mentioned, the directive requires a di significant additional reporting by private equity funds in relation to portfolio companies in which they have 30% or more and that will be both a significant cost burden and may well make private equity funds much less attractive investors in companies than um, for example trade buyers or other listed companies or, or private family holding companies. Exactly. And another issue that you touched upon was that non-EU-based fund managers cannot market their funds in the EU. It's a massive concern for uh, investors throughout the EU because as the uh, proposal currently stands, um, non-EU fund managers would not be able to market their funds within the EU and also would not be able to accept subscriptions from EU investors, even at the initiative of the investors, uh, which is uh, identified by the, as you say, by the Swedish presidency in, in, in the note that it recently published on the issues in the directive as being effectively an inappropriate interference with global capital flows. And there is certainly a massive concern on the part of institutional investors that they would be unable to access top performing funds that they need in order to achieve returns for their investors. During the course of this crisis, it has been much talk about systemic risk. But in this draft, it actually states quite clearly that private equity does not pose a systemic risk or what is referred to as a macroprudential risk in the draft. Well, that's right. And that, that has been a feature which has been noted not only by a number of commentators and critics of the directive, but also by a number of commentators on, on, on the origins of the credit crunch. Um, and so it certainly seems 
unfair so far as the private equity industry is concerned. But I believe that the political dynamics behind this directive are such that um, there, will, there will in due course be a directive, possibly not by August of next year, which is the current projected timetable, uh, but there will in due course be a directive. And I think it's hugely important for players in the private equity industry to be continuing to devote their efforts to uh, persuading um, both the Commission and also the members of the European Parliament who have a critical role in, in, in finalising the text of this directive that, to produce a system of regulation that is actually workable and, 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 and reflects the realities of the private equity industry. Do you think we will reach that point and get a directive that the private equity industry can live with? I believe that we will. It, it, it's, it has been a hugely political process, much, a much more political process than, than a, a lot of regulatory reforms that I've seen. Um, and that therefore means that, that there has to be a degree of uncertainty at this stage. But I think if you look at the, the, the growing consensus of opinion against the directive, it's very hard to find anyone who thinks that the draft that was rushed out at the end of April really represents a workable system of regulation. And therefore you have to hope that the outcome of the political process will be something that works. Uh, but there is a long, long way to go on that. If fund managers were to do something to prepare for this final directive, what would you, what would you recommend? I would recommend that they study the, the issues that are identified by the Swedish Presidency's note and lobby their MEPs on what they see as being the appropriate resolutions for those issues. And, and those cover huge issues. I mean, the entire scope of the directive, how should it apply to national pension funds, how should it apply to central banks. There are, hu there are huge questions which have, have been identified and um, players in the private equity industry need to focus on, on the outcomes that, that, that they want. But I think that the outcome that there will be no directive is, is, is too much to hope for. It may be a long time coming, but it will, it will come in the end. So there will definitely be a new regulatory landscape that private equity has to deal with. Yes, absolutely. And therefore, uh, people have to be pre preparing for it now. Um, and I know that a lot of our clients are, have worked through the existing directive, even though we don't really believe that that's going to come into force, identifying what the issues are f for their particular operation. And I think that's an exercise that everyone has to go through because it is coming in some form. That was some very good advice for fund managers out there. Thank you very much, Ronald Patchen from Eversheds. I'm Rika Ekhoff of Unquote, the private equity and venture capital news provider. Please check our website, www.unquote.com, and I will see you soon.